Hello, and welcome to what will hopefully be the first of many Commander deck building videos. I'm Kyle Krager, and today I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite commanders, Azuri Renegade Leader. Azuri is an elf general, and he costs one and two green, so he's a very low casting cost. And he has two pretty sweet abilities. He can tap for one to regenerate another target elf, keeping your elves alive longer. And he can tap for two and three green. And basically gives all elves the overrun ability, plus three, plus three, and trample. So he is a pretty sweet one to build around. So I'm going to talk to you about some of my choices for sweet commander cards to go with Azuri. All right, first we have what all elves do best, and that is Mana Ramp. So, there's Jagora Tree Speaker. She's a low-cost elf who has a level-up ability and can eventually make it so that all of your elves tap for two green mana, which is very good. Next we have Viridian Emissary. He's a low-cost elf who basically is a walking, rampant growth, allowing you to put a basic land into play tapped when he dies. Next we have Devoted Druid. She's a sweet one. She can tap to add green, just like most Alanoar Elves, and you can put a minus one minus one counter on her to do it again. Then there is Civic Wayfinder. He's a 2-2 that lets you search for a land and put it into your hand. Basic land. Farhaven Elf. 3 for 1-1. One, one. She'll let you search for basic land and put it onto the battlefield tapped. Plenty of mana ramp. Then we have the big daddy of mana producing, Elvish Arch Druid. He is low costed at 3. He comes with a solid 2-2 two -two body and he also has a lord ability allowing other elves to give you to get plus 1 plus 1 and you can tap him to add one green to your mana pool for each elf in play or excuse me, each elf that you control. Then we have Keeper of Progenitus. Basically this acts like a gauntlet of power, uh, making it so that all mountains, forests, and plains tap for two mana. Uh, you're really only benefiting from the forest ability, but maybe people playing plains and mountains at your table won't target you because you have this sweet card. Then we have your bread and butter of Elvish Mana Ramp. Land of Elves, one for a 1-1 one, one that lets you tap and add a green to your mana pool. Next we have Moldia Channelers. Uh, they're a pretty cool card. It costs three and they give you a 2-2 two, two body. And then depending on what the top card of your library is, as long as it's a creature, they get plus three, plus three. And as long as it's a land of any kind, they can tap to add two mana of any one color to your mana pool. Pretty sweet card. Next, a great awesome green utility card, who happens to be an elf, is Oracle of Moldiah. Although she costs four, her ability is absurd. It lets you put multiple lands into play in any one turn. Now we're getting into some... Uh, of the other creatures. You have Birchlore Rangers. Basically he lets you tap two untapped elves that you control and add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Uh, it's important to note that you can use this ability immediately uh, even if the creature hasn't been in play the entire time or it doesn't have haste. Next we have Wirewood Channelers who works similar to uh, Elvish Arch Druid. He basically says add X mana of any one color to your mana pool where X is the number of elves in play. This is important to note that it also counts your opponent's elves. Then there's format staple cultivate. Let's you search your library for up to two basic lands. You put one of them into play and one of them on the field. Tapped. Pretty sweet. Another spell similar to Cultivate is the new one from M13, Ranger's Path. You search your library for two forests and put them onto the battlefield tapped. More, more, more mana ramp. Alright, next we have a fun little guy, Copperhorn Scout. Basically, he lets you tap all of your elves for mana, and then when he attacks, you get to untap them and do it again. 
Then we have Druid's Repository, which is a, another sweet one from Abyssin Restored. Whenever a creature you control attacks, put a charge counter on Druid's Repository. Then you can remove a charge counter from Druid's Repository and add one mana of any color to your mana pool. With all the elves in this deck, you'll be attacking quite a bit, so Druid's Repository gets to make you a lot of mana. Alright, now we have Elvish Guidance. Uh, you enchant a land, and then whenever the enchanted land is tapped for mana, its controller adds one green to his or her mana pool for each elf in play. So this is another one of the older cards that lets you benefit from all elves. This is a sweet one. Alright, now we have sort of a little three card combo here with Wirewood Symbiote, Nettle Sentinel, and Heritage Druid. So I'll read you Heritage Druid first. She's a 1 for 1 1 that says tap 3 untapped elves you control, add 3 green to your mana pool. So you can use that ability immediately even if the creature doesn't have haste. Then you have Nettle Sentinel. Nettle Sentinel is a 1 for a 2 2 who doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. But whenever you play a green spell, you may untap Nettle Sentinel. And finally, you have Wirewood Symbiote. Wirewood Symbiote allows you to return an elf you control to its owner's hand and untap target creature, but you can only use this ability once per turn. So basically what you want to do is have Heritage Druid out and continue tapping elves to make green mana. Then whenever you play a green spell, Metal Sentinel will untap and allow you to untap him again. And then once you've untapped as much as possible, you can use Wirewood Symbiote to return an elf you control to your hand thus letting you cast another green spell and potentially giving you enough creatures untapped to tap three again. A oh, sweet little combo. So this deck has plenty of mana acceleration which basically allows you to abuse Azuri's bottom ability giving all elves plus three plus three and trample. You'll want to note that you can use this ability multiple times in a turn. So if you have five mana you can use it once but if you have 25 mana which is very possible with this deck you can use it five times and you know the possibilities are limitless from there. Alright, now we're going to talk about some more of the creatures in the deck. Alright, so now I'm going to look at cards that give elves additional power or that pump them in some way. So here we have Timberwatch Elf. He is a 3 for 1, 2 and target creature gets plus x plus x until the end of turn where x is the number of elves in play. You can give this to Azuri to swing for massive general damage. Alright, now we have one of my favorites, Immaculate Magistrate. She is a 4 for 2 2, and you can tap her to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature for each elf you control. This can make any creature huge, and it's especially great when you're using your general. Alright, now we have another old favorite with sort of a newer printing, Elvish Champion. She's 3 for 2 2, but other elf creatures get plus 1 plus 1 and have Forest Walk. So this is really sweet, especially because a lot of people love playing green and commander. Which means they're typically going to have a forest, and she lets you attack them unblocked. Alright, now we're going to look at another creature here, Bramblewood Paragon. A very good card, considering how many elves are warriors. She's 2 for a 2-2, two -two, and each other warrior creature you control comes into play with a plus 1, plus 1 counter on it. Each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it has trample. So this is a really easy way to give your warriors trample and make them big. And oh, just because, Azuri is a warrior, so good to know another easy way to give him trample. Alright, now the last creature we have that makes other elves big, and also, coincidentally, produces tokens, is Imperious Perfect. She's three for a two-two. She says other elf creatures you control get plus one plus one, and you can tap her and a forest to put a one one green elf warrior creature token onto the battlefield. Pretty sweet. All right, now we're going to look at some cards that are not creatures, but still make your creatures a lot bigger. Coat of Arms is a standard for any tribal deck. If you haven't played this thing and you're playing tribal, you're missing out. Overrun. What better way to smash through someone's defenses than a spell that gives all of your creatures plus three, plus three, and trample, just in case you don't have Azuri out to use his ability. Next we have Wirewood Pride. Usually I don't like including pump spells in a commander deck because they're only a one-time use, 
but this one gets pretty absurd. It's a 1 for target creature gets plus x plus x until the end of turn where x is the number of elves in play. This can make your commander swing for huge damage or it can make blocking for an opponent a nightmare. Alright, second to last card is Beastmaster Ascension. This is a great card. It's an enchantment that costs 3 that says whenever creature you control attacks, put a quest counter on Beastmaster Ascension. And as long as Beastmaster Ascension has 7 or more quest counters on it, creatures you control get plus 5, plus 5. You have a lot of elves, so you're going to be doing a lot of attacking, and Beastmaster Ascension will have enough counters on it very quickly. And the final card is actually an equipment. It's Conda's Banner. Conda's Banner is a legendary artifact, and it costs 2 to play and 2 to equip, and it can only be attached to a legendary creature, like Azuri. Creatures that share a color with the equipped creature, green, get plus 1, plus 1, and creatures that share a creature type with the equipped creature get plus 1, plus 1 as well. So all of your green elves and your green elf deck will be getting plus 2, plus 2. It's a pretty sweet card. Alright, now that we've talked about mana ramp and creature pumping, let's look at a couple other things our deck does well. Green is the color of destruction, namely artifact and enchantment destruction. So we have quite a few fun cards to do that. First off, there's Viridian Shaman. She's a 3 for a 2-2, two, two, that whenever she comes into play, you get to destroy target artifact. Next we have Viridian Corruptor. She's a 3 for a 2-2 two, two with Infect, that whenever she comes into play, you get to destroy target artifact. Redundancy is awesome in Commander. Alright, the next creature we have here is one that has plenty of utility. Acidic Slime. This guy is awesome. He does cost quite a bit at 5, but he's a 2-2 two -two with Death Touch that lets you blow up a creature, or excuse me, not a creature, he lets you blow up an enchantment, an artifact, or a land. That's a lot of utility for one card. Alright, now that we're done with the artifact and enchantment creatures, or destroyer creatures, we're going to look at some of the spells. So here we have Relic Crush. Yeah, this one costs a little bit, but with all the mana that our deck is going to be producing, the cost doesn't seem that bad. At 5, it, it's an instant that lets you destroy target artifact or enchantment, and up to one other target artifact or enchantment. So you get 2 for the price of 1 card. Then you have Slice and Twain. It's a 4 cost instant that lets you destroy target artifact or enchantment, and draw a card. Next there's Gleeful Sabotage, two for a sorcery, sorcery that lets you destroy target artifact in, or enchantment, and you can convoke it. With all the green creatures in this deck, that's no problem. Alright, since we don't play a whole lot of artifacts, we really like this card, Creeping Corrosion. Four for destroy all artifacts. I like that. Now we have Spring Cleaning. Spring Cleaning takes care of instants. So you can destroy target instant, or excuse me, not instant, what am I talking about? Spring Cleaning takes care of enchantments. So it lets you pay 2 to destroy target enchantment, then you clash with an opponent, and if you win, you get to destroy all enchantments your opponents control. That's pretty good. And finally, we have the Mac Daddy of Destruction, Beast Within. For the low, low price of 3 mana and giving your opponent a 3-3 beast token, you can destroy target permanent. Anything. Lands, planeswalkers, you name it, this kills it. Alright, now that we looked at Green's Destruction, look at a couple of other things that we have in this deck. Green doesn't have a lot of access to card draw, so we have to take what we can get. Collective Unconscience. Cost 6, it's a sorcery, and it lets you draw a card for each creature you control. You're going to have a lot of elves, so this is probably going to draw you a lot of cards. Alright, now the standard and awesome Oops, move my card. There we go. Elvish Visionary. One, a 2 for a 1-1 one, one that lets you draw a card, and as an elf, is pretty sweet, especially when you can replay this card with cards like Wirewood Symbiote. Alright, this doesn't actually say draw any number of cards, but Lead the Stampede is a great one. Pay 3, look at the top 5 cards of your library, you may reveal any number of creature cards from among them, and put the revealed cards into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Nine times out of ten, you're going to hit at least two creatures. If you hit five, that's awesome. You just paid three to draw five cards. All right, this is another great one for green. Rites of Flourishing. Three for an enchantment that lets you draw an additional card at the beginning of your draw step and lets you play 
an additional land on your turn. It benefits everybody else, so maybe they won't come after you early. Alright, this is probably one of the few creatures in the deck that isn't an elf. But Kithkin Mourncaller, a 3 for a 2-2, two, two, says whenever an attacking Kithkin or elf is put into your graveyard from play, you may draw a card. Don't forget to count tokens. And finally, we have Llanowar Empath, 4 for a 2-2. Two, two. When Llanowar Empath comes into play, you can scry 2, then reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature card, put it on top, put it into your hand. That's pretty easy to do in this deck. Alright, so now we just looked at all of the card draw that our elves offer us. We're going to look at a couple other things. When you can't draw the card you need, maybe you can search it out. Wirewood Herald is 2 for a 1-1 one, one, and says whenever Wirewood Herald dies, you may search your library for an elf card. If you do, reveal that card and put it into your hand. Then shuffle your library. It's pretty sweet. Then you have Elvis Harbinger, two, or excuse me, three for a one-two. It says whenever whenever Elvis Harbinger comes into play, search your library for an elf, reveal it, put it all on top of your deck. Then Elvis Harbinger taps to add one mana of any color to your mana pool, usually green. Finally, we have Sky Shroud Poacher. 4 for a 2-2. Two, two. Yes, it's a rebel, but it searches out elves. You pay 3, you tap it, you search the library for an elf card, and put that card into play. That's important. It goes straight into play. Alright, now let's look at a couple other things, and we're almost done. While a few of the cards I've already showed you make tokens, here's a couple more. There's Lys Alana Huntmaster, 4 for a 3-3, three, three. and whenever you cast an elf spell, you may put a 1-1 one, one green creature excuse me, 1-1 one, one green elf warrior creature token onto the battlefield. This combo is really well with Heritage Druid and with Nettle Sentinel. Then there's Wolf Skull Shaman, 2 for a 2-2, two, two, and it has the Kinship ability that lets you look at the top card of your library during your upkeep, and if it shares a creature type with Wolf Skull Shaman, either elf or shaman, you get a 2-2 two, two green wolf into play. And finally, there's my favorite doubling elf card, Elvish Promenade. Four for a sorcery that says put a 1-1 green elf warrior creature token onto the battlefield for each elf you control. And it's an elf card, so you can search it up with your searchers. All right, we got a couple more, and then we're going to be done. This really fits into the category of life gain, but it is also an elf. Well Wisher is a two for a 1-1 that says tap you gain one life for each elf in play. That includes your opponents. Then we have a couple other cards here. We have Leyline of Vitality, which if you have this in your opening hand, starts in play already. And it gives creatures you control plus zero plus one. And whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you can gain one life. Pretty sweet. All right, now we have something to let your creatures get through when they're attacking. Bellowing Tangleworm, 5 for a 4-4, four, four, has Intimidate and gives all your green creatures Intimidate as well, which means they can only be blocked by artifact creatures or creatures with, that are also green. Alright, now there's a couple cards in here that lets you get things back from your graveyard. We have Reap, which is 2 for an instant. Return any number of target cards from your graveyard to your hand. You cannot choose more cards than the number of black permanents target opponent controls. So if you have Nobody in your playing playgroup playing black, you probably want to sub this card out for something else. But if you have a dedicated black player, then playing this card with them in the group is going to net you a lot of cards back from your graveyard. And then there's Revive. Two for a sorcery to let you return any target green card from your graveyard to your hand. Alright, a few more cards to go. We have Jagged Scar Archers, and this is a really fun card that's power and toughness are equal to the number of elves you control and you can tap it to deal damage equal to its power to target creature with flying. Elves don't have a lot of ways to take care of flying creatures but that's definitely one of them. Next there's Heedless One. Heedless One's four for uh, Trample and Heedless One's power and toughness are equal to the number of elves in play and that also includes your opponents. Finally another card that power and toughness are equal to the number of elves you control is Drove of Elves. Drove of Elves costs four and has Hexproof, which is pretty sweet. All right, a few left. 
Of course, if you're going to build an elf deck, you need an elf planeswalker, like Nissa Ravine. She costs four, has two loyalty to start out with, and lets you search your library for a card named Nissa's Chosen and put it on the battlefield. Otherwise, you're going to be gaining two life for each elf you control. This can gain you a lot of life. If you ever do actually get to use Nissa's Ultimate, you can search your library for any number of elf creature cards and put them onto the battlefield. Pretty sweet. And here's the copy of Nissa's Chosen, just in case you don't know what it looks like. Alright, now we have Descendant's Path, a new card from Avacyn Restored. Cost 3, and basically lets you cheat creatures into play. At the beginning of your upkeep, you reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature card that shares a creature type with a creature you control, you may cast that card without paying its mana cost. Otherwise, put it on the bottom of your library. It's important to note that if you reveal an elf card during your upkeep and cast it, you still get to draw a card. Then there's Wild Pair. I love Wild Pair. Wild Pair is awesome. You should run it. Basically, it lets you play one creature and then search out another creature and get its effect as well. This is how you play 2-2 two -two Elves and then get 2-2 two -two Acidic Slimes to blow up artifacts, enchantments, or land. Wild Pair is awesome and you should be running it if you're playing any kind of creature-based deck. Alright, the final four cards that are not land are Tarjuru Preserver. 2 for 2 1 that basically protects you from Eldrazi and other sacrifice effects. Creature, excuse me, spells and abilities your opponents control can't cause you to sacrifice permanence. Pretty sweet. Next there's Gaia's Herald. 2 for a 1 1. Creature spells can't be countered. Keep in mind this means your opponents as well. Then the two other equipment in the deck. Whisper Silk Cloak. Shroud and Unblockable. On Azuri. Pretty sweet. And then Swift Foot Foods. Two, and then paying one to give your creature haste and hexproof is pretty good. Alright, now onwards to the lands. Mainly, I'm running 29 forests. So many forests. The other special lands in the deck, other than the 29 basic forests, are Orin Reef the Vastwood, which lets you tap to add one green mana to your mana pool, or you can put a plus one plus one counter on each green creature that entered the battlefield this turn. That can really add up, considering that some turns you could have a ton of elves entering the battlefield. Then we have Tranquil Thicket. Think you have enough lands? Just cycle Tranquil Thicket away and draw a new card. And finally, we have Wirewood Lodge. You can tap it to add one mana, one colorless mana to your mana pool, or you can pay a green to untap target elf. If you choose the right elf, this can really do a lot of great stuff. That's it for the land, and that's it for my commander deck building review of Azuri Renegade Leader. If you liked what you've seen here, please comment and subscribe. Otherwise, look out for another commander deck building review uh, in the near future. Thank you so much, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.